the head on an insect is actually slowing down visual motion. So it's reducing motion blur. The head movements in flies are incredibly fast. So they're on the order of about 10 milliseconds, uh, actually four times faster than, than the wings. They're coordinating their, their head and their wings very carefully in a way that allows them to uh, stabilize their gaze very effectively. Uh, this has really important implications for understanding uh, flight control in insects and also potentially for understanding our own coordination uh, for doing gaze stabilization. My lab works at the interface of biology and engineering and so we try to extract principles from biology using engineering tools that can advance the state of the art of, in, in engineering, uh, particularly in robotics. What we're looking at here is sensing in flight. Uh, specifically, we're looking at how flies actively sense their visual environment. What we did is we built this you know, virtual reality flight simulator, which allows to, us to have very precise control over the fly's uh, visual environment. So we came up with these experiments, basically where, where we moved the world of the fly in virtual reality. And we actually developed our own custom software to track the head and wings using high-speed videos that we took and using these tools to understand and basically pull out the underlying mechanism in this behavior. Head movements we found are you know, essential for flies in flight and they aid in a variety of visual stabilization tests. If we look at the best man-made, you know, let's say insect scale robots, they pale in comparison to what flies and other small insects can do. Flies can perform amazing tasks. They can land upside down on a ceiling, which nothing we've designed as humans comes even close to doing. So if we can somehow understand how these underlying mechanisms work and apply them to our own insect scale robots, this could change the way we look uh, you know, at, the, at this category of robotics. And so there's a huge interest in developing smart sensors to enable things like space exploration, industrial monitoring, uh, doing search and rescue, uh, in disaster areas. There are also implications for neuroscience and trying to understand how the brain controls movement. Biology has amazing solutions that already exist that have solved problems that we've been trying to solve for years. So if you want to design a robot that can land upside down on a ceiling or design a robot that can actively sense the visual world, look to biology first for inspiration before uh, you know, using your typical engineering tools to solve the problem.